Uh, Dyadic has the potential to uh, make many changes, both from an environmental and a societal standpoint, in bio through the use of biotechnology. We can help feed the world, fuel the world, and heal the world, you know, which is a traditional slogan used in the biotech industry. And uh, in the case of dyadic, we've actually coined the term inside. So it's dyadic inside, just as it's Intel inside a computer. It's dyadic inside the medicines, the fuel, the food you eat, and the, the clothes you wear, and all the varieties of things that are being made today through the use of biotechnology. So we believe that uh, using our expression system, which is a technology where you take DNA and turn into proteins and enzymes, and enzymes are the things that are running life. So it turns something else into something else. In the case of fueling the world, we believe that we can turn biomass or agricultural waste products, the non-food part of a crop, into sugar to displace oil. And through that, we can provide local jobs, stimulate local economy, economies, and also basically wean the world off of its dependence on oil. So the things that are going on, of course, today in the Gulf uh, can be prevented by the advent of new catalysts. So taking the, the negative of what's going on in the Gulf today and turning it into a positive and using it as a catalyst to launch an alternative energy momentum in this country and across the world. Our history is very interesting, starting off in the stonewash blue jean business. You know, we helped pioneer the stonewash industry by using pumice stones to soften and fade denim to create a more comfortable and fashionable blue jean, working with companies like Levi, Guess, Wrangler, etc. The interesting part about that, that led us into the biotechnology industry because cotton is cellulose, and cellulose is what you can convert into glucose to make fuel. And so we found a fungus in Russia in the early 1990s, and we developed that technology. We took that microorganism and improved its efficiencies and how much enzyme can be produced by a factor of 400 plus. And so we were able to then take this fungus that was making enzymes that wash genes and enable it to be programmed to make other enzymes from the genes of other things in the world, including its own genome, to make fuels. And that same platform technology not only can be used to break down cotton or cellulose to glucose, it's also now being engineered to try to make new, more affordable medicines to basically treat an aging population under a healthcare crisis. As you know, the protein therapeutic drugs are some of the most expensive treatments. And we're trying to get healthcare costs under control. And we think that through dyadic and its C1 platform technology, we can help basically not only treat the world, but heal and feed the world as well. I think the biggest challenge facing all of us is what to do and why. We have the ability to take a gene and mass produce in large volumes cheaply, but we have to have a reason, we have to have a partner, we have to have a market. And so we're trying to talk to the scientists that are here, talk to the businesses that are here, the international collaborators that we already have, like Codexis and Abengoa, and we're looking to form new collaborations and new partnerships to apply our knowledge and our expertise and our technology to solve their problems, to bring new things to the market, that can help change the world. I think a lot of people view science as a sort of a daunting task, insurmountable challenges. I think we're a great example of how that's a fallacy. We've started off, I'm a journalism major that wrestled at the University of Iowa. So by training, you know, educational training, I have no biochemistry background, but on the job training, I have over 20 years of that. And we've been able to take a technology, a fungus we found in Russia, and turn it into enzymes that can wash blue jeans, that can fuel our cars, and we're working on now healing the world in terms of new, better, more affordable medicines. So if a journalism major from Iowa can do this, what can a scientist do if he applies business to science? And I think that the children today and the youth of today, the message is science is already doing the things that you guys think are cool. It's treating your, your enzymes or washing your blue jeans. So we end up with more comfortable, more fashionable denim. So all the jeans that the kids wear in high school every day, science has actually made that difference. They just don't know it. I think educating the, the youth of today that science, there is a need for science and there's a way to commercialize and there's a way to make money from science. And I think that when I grew up, I didn't understand that and it certainly went over my head. But being embedded in this technology and in this industry, I've learned that the hard way with on-the-job training and I think that people have to realize that there are great advances yet to be discovered and great things, but we need to be able to commercialize those things. And that's what our company, Dyadic, does well, is we take a piece of DNA and we turn it into protein, but we do it not in a test tube, we do it in 40,000 gallon fermenters, which are four stories tall, large vessels, large volumes, cheaply, and that's what makes a difference. To bring a, to bring a discovery to market, there's a lot of challenges that are daunting, so it's the science and it's the business challenges that need to come together, and when they do, we can create wonderful things, like new drugs or new fuels, 
or new medicines or new food or more nutritious, healthier foods. And the youth of America has to realize that if they want to make a difference, they can. And through science, I think they can do that in a great big way.